And as I'm watching it produce this really well-written code, I'm equal parts in awe and in terror. Hey everybody, I'm Ben. Ever since ChatGPT's been released, I've been obsessed with how good it is at coding. And recently, an open source model's been released called Engineer GPT, which takes what ChatGPT does and brings it to the next level. Engineer GPT acts as an agent to build your entire application just based on a simple prompt. Unlike ChatGPT, Engineer GPT builds the structure of the application for you, creates all the files. In this video, I'll show you how to set it up. It's super easy. And then we'll run an example through. I think you'll be blown away by the results. First, you have to download the code onto your computer. So go over to the GPT Engineer GitHub site. I'll put a link to that in the description. And then you can just clone this code. If you have a GitHub account, just clone it. Or if you don't, you just go to code, download zip, and then extract it to a folder on your computer. Now you have downloaded on your computer, open it up in Visual Studio Code. And the first thing I would do is check that you have Python installed because this is all written in Python, you'll need to have that. So just do a Python version command and if it comes back with version three or higher, you should be good. And then open up the readme file and in there it has a setup instruction for how to install the requirements. So you can just copy and paste that, just a pip command and that'll install everything you need. And the last step is just to set up your OpenAI API key. So you can just run an, ex an export command so you can say export OpenAI API key and equals your key on Mac and then on Windows just change export to set like I did here and that should be good and you should be good to go for that. I tried to use the, the 3.5 turbo API instead of the version 4 one because it's cheaper but it didn't work for me so I had to use the GPT-4 one. And just to give you a bit of a sense of the cost when I ran all these with the GPT-4 API it cost about 25 cents each project it created for me which as you'll see it's not bad for what it's doing but you know, if you're doing a whole bunch of testing with it, just keep that in mind. So with the setup complete, now all you have to do is run this thing. So to do that, all you have to do is just create a folder in the root of this project um, and call it the name of the application you want to build. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to ask it to build me an application that scrubs medical records and takes all the personal data off them. And let's see how it does with that. So to do that, I just create a folder right here called medical private data scrub. And then inside that, put in a file named main prompt. And then in there, is this is where you describe what you want the application to do. So I said, create a Python application that takes a patient medical record in text format, removes all personally identifiable information, and outputs the result in a PDF document with underscore clean added to the file name. Of course, you get more descriptive than this, but this is just a really good example of an actual useful application. And let's see how it performs. So I actually get it running. Uh, go back to the readme. You can just copy the run command. So all I have to do is just put this into your terminal and then replace the my new project with the name of the project you just created. So I'm gonna change mine to medical private data scrub. All right, this is exciting. Let's see how this thing performs. So the first thing it's doing here is it's taking that main prompt we provided and it's breaking it down into tasks that the application has to perform, and the features that to make that happen. And from there, it starts writing a little spec on the application, describing all the functions and components that'll be building. And this is something the developers are notoriously bad at. They just start pounding out code and it's great that this gives you at least a starting point in the documentation. And now it's actually coding the application itself. And as I'm watching it produce this really well-written code, I'm equal parts in awe and in terror. I mean, it's amazing the completeness and quality of this entire application is building right before my eyes. It's also scary because of the disruption it's still gonna cause. I just can't imagine what a junior developer will do anymore. If this stuff gets much better, that role is basically gone. So let's see how, what this thing produced and if it actually works. So now underneath that folder, created two new folders, one called memory and one called workspace. So the memory one is where it stores the log files. This is all the interactions it did with the GPT API. It stores them in these log files. It has context about what happened to build this application. Also in here, it's got the specification file, which is super cool. This is when it took that initial prompt we gave it and broke the problem down into these following tasks and features. And it wrote those all down in kind of point form notes saying exactly what it did and what features it built. And the thing I really love about this thing is it names everything so well. It's also one problem I see all the time with junior developers is they don't name their variables and their classes and stuff very well. And this does that, names it perfectly, so it makes it super easy for someone to come in later and, and adjust this code. And then next in that memory directory, you have unit tests. And this is just a big listing of all the tests it created, and then references to the Python files it created that you can run to, to run those tests. So it's really cool how they use like test-driven development to build some of this development code. It's a really good way to do it. And it's really handy, because like in this one, for example, it even put in there, personal information into the test. So we can just run these tests to make sure that it's removing all the right information. And then in the workspace folder here, this is the, actually the application code it gave us. So it broke everything down nicely into different Python files 
and you didn't have to do any copy and pasting out of ChatGPT. It created all these files for us. So this is, I'm pretty blown away by how well it did this. Let's take a little bit of look at the code quality. So let's like open the function up that it wrote for actually cleaning up the medical records. So I think that one was PII remover. And so what it's did, done here is come up with a bunch of regular expressions. Those are basically pattern matches that you can use to take data out of text. And so what the nice thing is, it actually added comments here for all the different regular expressions developed. So this one it created to remove names, this one created to remove addresses, phone numbers, etc. So this is really good for someone to take this code and work and keep building on it. Because if it didn't have that, you kind of have to be trying to figure out what, what all these regular expressions are actually doing. So I'm super impressed with this. So I saw in the code it wants as input a uh, text two text files, so I just added those into this directory. I just uh, copied this. I actually took this out of ChatGPT, and it's just a fake medical record with some personal information on it. And now let's go into that workspace directory and just open an integrated terminal. Let's just try to run it. So let's just say python main.py. And there you can see there created two new clean PDF files. And this is what it came back with. I'm really impressed by this. It's gotten rid of all the private information, all the names, birth dates, phone numbers, even the address and everything. The only thing is it did go a little bit too far, too aggressive with the redaction. So it took away like blood pressure, for example, it thought that was a name, so it redacted that. So there's definitely some tweaking you can do to this, but as a first cut of it, this is pretty amazing stuff. It even got rid of the doctor's name, the date. And let me know in the comments, are you using tools like Engineer GPT? What kind of use cases are you using them for? So while I'm blown away by this, there are a few things that still needs to improve. An exception handling could actually be better. I've noticed that it doesn't really do a lot of exception handling for different edge cases. And it's not good at UIs at all. Like I've done a few of them with um, where I created a user interface for me, which is kind of cool, but they're very basic and they didn't really work. The buttons, the events didn't work on the buttons and stuff like that. So it's really better for backend right now. But this is just so powerful. You combine this with something like GitHub Copilot and you can really become a really good developer really fast now. And if you're interested in AI software development, make sure you check out this video next where I build an AI powered Discord bot, which is really cool. Have a great day, everybody. I'll talk to you in the next one.